morning, everyone. Um, my name is Yuan Zhe Tang. I'm an um, associate professor in the School of Earth and Atmospheric Science and also Civil Environmental Engineering. I'm a geochemist by training, so I'm here to talk a little bit more about the nature aspect of sustainability. And um, I'm here to promote our research as well as the research efforts that I'm, um, or overall efforts that I'm currently leading for a campus initiative that's um, sponsored by uh, BBISS as well as Strategic Energy Institute on Critical Mineral Resources and recently a newly established center at College of Science that's also sponsored by BBISS Strategic Energy Institute as well as IMAT and IEN. So some of you might ask what is critical minerals? It might sound a little bit not so familiar, um, but so by definition, critical minerals are the minerals, elements, or metals that are critical and essential for the development and um, uh, evolution of sustainable and clean energy. And we rely heavily on them. To give you a few examples, these include battery-related metals such as lithium, nickel, cobalt, as well as rare earth elements. And um, these are very important. A lot of them are not, are not able to be replaced for battery production. Um, rare earth elements are also important for a lot of high-tech and uh, clean, sustainable technologies such as wind turbine, um, permanent magnets, it's in your cell phone, in your laptop, and um, so we cannot live without them. But as you can imagine, with the booming growth of um, EV and clean technology push, we have a huge demand, and this demand is growing and at a very steady steady, um, steep um, uh, rate, but the, unfortunately the supply and production of these critical minerals currently are um, highly concentrated regionally in certain regions or countries. So the challenges here that are facing us um, are multifolded. First is to explore new and alternative resources, understanding them. Um, and secondly, try to develop sustainable and green technologies for the extraction and production of these minerals and metals because the traditional uh, production technologies typically involve harsh chemicals and come with very serious um, environmental and health burdens. And the third challenge that as an environmental background trained person, I would say, is really also from take a system level approach, try to also manage the wastes that would be generated during either the mining, mining, extraction, or processing processes. And the fourth aspect that I recently thought about is what can we do as higher level education institute is to educate and um, help train a pipeline of workforce for not just addressing the immediate challenges, but also sustain you know, 10, 20, 30 years of the sustainable production and generation and domestic supply of these uh, important resources. So, um, what my own research has been focused on this aspect is we look at uh, geological resources such as here, Georgia kaolin mining, they produce mine residues. We look at the potential occurrence of rare earth elements in these mine residues and how we might beneficially use them instead of opening up new mines or um, uh, try to also look for sustainable green technologies for the extraction. Um, we also work on uh, uh, the development of technologies and uh, development of more closed-loop um, approach for the extraction of critical minerals from spent batteries, um, combustion residues such as coal fly ash, municipal solid waste incineration ash, scrap magnets or electronic waste and mine tailings. And um, just to, I guess, to end with a little bit promotion on the uh, new center that we just recently established um, by College of Science with support of all the um, institutes, IRIs, um, interdisciplinary research institutes. Um, the three pillars of this center that we are working on, the first pillar obviously is on science and engineering. So we look into the um, 
uh, exploration of new resources, including geological resources, marine resources, alternative or waste to resources, as well as AI machine learning for resource identification and development of engineering or applied um, extraction technologies. And then the second pillar is really on the educational and workforce development side that I just mentioned about. Um, not just um, develop science and technology for the immediately available um, technology technology and uh, industry development, but also train a long pipeline of workforce from all the way from um, uh, graduate or immediately available workforce level, but also down the pipeline to K-12 education as well. And we're hoping to establish a minor on uh, resources that's open to campus, so not just um, science major students can take, but also engineering students or social science, um, whoever wants to learn about some aspects of resources or critical minerals would be, uh, should be able to participate. And then the third aspect is actually to develop regional resources uh, in collaboration of the three R1 universities, Georgia Tech, UGA, and Georgia State University, to try to um, uh, hope, hopefully, um, help the state of Georgia develop into a demonstration, a demo state, a model state where we have a uh, supply chain existing where we go from the resource aspect to solutions, engineered science and engineered solution, but also all the way to end users as well. So that's our long-term vision. Obviously, we're just at the beginning, and I very much look forward to work with many of you on this aspect, not just from uh, science, but also engineering, as well as social science. As you can imagine, there are many, many social science aspects, as well as equity and um, outreach, community benefit um, aspects of this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.